All right, here we are. We're going to continue from where we left off. Uh, the last time we worked on this, what we did officially, is we found out that not all polynomials have rational zeros, but if they do, they're going to come from a pool of all possible rational zeros for that particular polynomial. And we found out how to find them, and we're going to be doing that today, because that's step one in finding the rational zeros and other zeros of um, higher order polynomials, which means they're of a degree greater than two. Let's see, find the rational zeros and then the other zeros of higher order polynomials. And here's how you go about it. The first step in doing that is the first step we used in the last video on this topic, which was how do you find all the possible rational zeros? So that is always step one. So step one. Find all possible rational zeros. There I go, I'm trying to write neatly. And we do that by using that funny little P over Q. And we're about to do that right now. Our leading coefficient is one. Let's see if I need to make that bigger. A little bigger. Our leading coefficient is one. And our constant at the end is six. Remember that we don't worry a lot about um, the signs because we, we take the positive and the negative anyway. So P over Q, P will consist of positive and negative, all of the factors, the integer factors of six, well, actually, the positive integer factors of six, which are one times six and two times three. So now what I do is a very sneaky thing. I erase the times and I put in a comma instead. And then I just put them in order only because it's easier. One, two, three, and six. Now Q is all the factors of the leading coefficient, but look at that. The leading coefficient is one. So Q is just going to be the set of negative one and positive one. Not terribly exciting, is it? So what we're going to do is find P over Q. And with Q on the bottom, our plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus six, over plus or minus one is all just going to end up being plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, and plus or minus six. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, plus of eight, counting the positive and, and the negative, eight possibilities for rational zeros. OK, now the second step, step two.
graph the polynomial and look for numbers that would be among, look for x-intercepts that would be among these numbers. You never know if you're going to find them or not. It's part of the excitingness. Excitingness? It's part of what makes this kind of problem exciting. Okay, so step two, graph. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go to Y equals. And I'm going to show the large viewer so that it will just be easier for you to see. There now. Oh, right. Well, I do have to see what I'm graphing, don't I? There it is. OK, so X caret 3, right arrow key, plus 3x squared minus 2x minus 6. And I'm going to graph that. Hmm. Well, it looks like negative one, negative two, negative three. It looks like negative three could be a zero. I don't know. So I'm going to use synthetic division to find out for sure. Step three. Use synthetic division. Okay, so here I go. 1x to the third plus 3x squared minus 2x minus 6. And then I'll write the coefficients underneath like this. And then, now let me look at this again. All right, negative one, negative two, negative three is my guess. If I get a zero remainder, then that means that negative three is a rational zero. So now I'm all set up to do synthetic division. I pull down my leading coefficient and all I do is copy it. Then I say one times negative three is negative three. And I move over to the next position when I write it. So positive three plus negative three is zero. Now zero times negative three is zero. And negative two plus zero is negative two. And it looks like we're gonna have some good luck here. Negative two times negative three is positive six. Negative six plus positive six is zero. Okay, and there we have proof that negative three is a rational
zero. Um, miss, so how do we know um, what number to like the guess? I guess? You graph and you guess. Um. That's that's the most you can hope for right there is to look at this. Well, let me find. Let me find this there. To look at this. Bubba is in the house. Um, and and to guess like here, look at that. This line is between negative one and negative two. I don't know what it is. And this and the line go crosses the x axis here between one and two. I don't know what that is, but I do see that negative three would be a good guess. But all it was was a guess. So I tried it and I did get a zero remainder. So now I am going to move on to step four. Okay. Which is step four. Find the other zeros. By factoring the quadratic. This was one X to the third. And when you do a synthetic division, this becomes the leading coefficient of a degree that's one lower. And now look at this. You have a quadratic. And you can always, <clears throat> excuse me, you can always solve a quadratic. So that's what we're going to do by solving the, um, um, that's the quotient, the quadratic quotient. All right, so what are we going to have here? We're going to have 1x squared plus 0x plus negative 2 is minus 2 equals 0. Well, 0x, zero, 0 times x is just 0. So that makes this, that makes this x squared minus two equals zero. Yes, yes, I changed chairs, didn't I? Well, you'll just have to make do. Now I'm going to solve this. Notice that the linear term zeroed out. So I'm going to use the square root principle, which is easy. So let me go plus two plus two. So I'll have x squared equals two. Then I take the square root of both sides and I put a plus or minus over here. So the square root of x squared is x equals plus or minus the square root of two. And so X equals, here are the zeros. Well, no, let me do it the way they do it in the book though, and in most math books.
You'll be asked about the rational zeros. And it'll be written like that because you might have one, you might have more. Well, our only rational zero is negative three. And then what are called the other zeros. Well, that's going to be negative the square root of two and positive the square root of two. Now, tomorrow, we're going to take the last step, which is to write this polynomial, or whatever polynomial you're working with, in factored form. So, we're not going to do it today, but step five will bring us to the complete um the complete um story really of of finding the rational zeros and the other zeros of polynomial functions so to do that we're going to write the polynomial in factored form. So let's look at what we did. We're asked to find the rational zeros and then the other zeros of the polynomial function f of x equals x to the third plus 3x squared minus 2x minus 6. And so, it's a cubic. And while I bet we could have used grouping on this, it's better to use what's intended, and that is that we use the p over q method. That's what we're going to use as step one, and that will give us the pool, a big bowl of all the possible rational zeros for this polynomial. So you find all your P factors, you find all your Q factors, you put all the P factors over all the Q factors, and on this particular problem, it was pretty easy doing that. We came out with these eight numbers. Okay, now then I graphed, and thank goodness negative three is one of those numbers. It has to be. And so yes, the next step is to graph it and to guess from the graph what would be a good candidate to use synthetic division on? And we found a good candidate. We used synthetic division on negative three and found out that yes, indeed, it is a zero and it's a rational number, so it's a rational zero. Then we move on with the quotient it has to be a quadratic quotient. Working because we can always solve quadratics in one way or another. Um, we find the other zeros from solving the quadratic quotient right here. And we did that. And these are our other zeros. Which are irrational zeros but they don't like to call. If I wrote the math book, I would be very specific. I'd probably make it so hard, nobody would pass. So nobody would use my book. So 
they stick to other zeros. And then the last step will be to take all, all these zeros, whatever they are, here they're negative three, negative the square root of two and positive the square root of two, and use the factor formula to write this original polynomial in factored form. Okay. We're gonna use the same steps with this. Oh, only now it's not gonna be so easy. So I propose to graph it first, just so we can maybe, um, yeah, not have to work this hard. So, um, yeah, let me get this going. Roll this up. Okay, 5x to the third, which is carrot 3, plus 7x squared, plus 245x, plus 343. Let me make sure I've got that. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> All right. All right, cool. Now you see, I have I have no idea how to graph this. I mean, how to, I mean, I can't see all of it. I mean, maybe I am seeing the only interesting part. I don't know. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I am going to have to, I'm gonna do what's called a zoom fit. I go to zoom, and I go all the way down to zoom fit. That'll be zoom zero. Enter. All right. All right. And it's not gonna come down again. Well, that looks like negative one. Only This doesn't look like negative one. It's not. So, you know what? We are going to have to I was thinking of trying to do it by grouping, but I guess we better be honest about this. And second quit. I'm gonna break down 343. There's nothing else I can do. So Y equals, yes, I am gonna do that. Y equals 343 three divided by X. Now, graph. Not graph, you silly goose. I'm talking to myself. Second graph. All right, now we leave out all the decimals. Let me call this up. All right, and seven and 49, all right. So one times 343, we're gonna have to do this. We're gonna have to go to a lot more effort for this one. 343 equals one times 343 
And then there's a big jump to seven times 49. And now having lost my screen, I'll just have to write it out for you. Ah, there it is, right there. Okay, so one times 343, and then we've got a bunch of decimals. Seven times 49, and then decimals. I think that's all there is. Well, it can't be because I know 14 will go into it. Won't it? No, no, I guess not. So those are gonna be my only, only factors, okay. How strange, all right, so P. is going to equal plus or minus one, seven, 49, and 343. And Q will equal plus or minus one and five. So our P over Q, you saw me, I tried to cheat, didn't do any good. We're gonna use one, seven, 49, and 343 over one. We know what that'll be. And, one, seven, 49, and 343 over five. Now, I have an idea here. Namely, let's go back to the graph. Hello, come on, come on. Oh, that's right, I got rid of it. Okay, so back to this. 5x to the third plus 7x squared plus 245x plus 343. There, look at that. Now that's between negative one and negative two. Let me between negative one and negative two. If that's a rational number, it's not one or negative one, that's for sure. It's not one fifth, because that would be between zero and negative one if it was negative one fifth. So this could be negative seven fifths. I'll just pull it down there. All right, because look at what our P over Q is going to be. This was not as bad as I thought, but you had to have a certain amount of courage to do it plus or minus, which I didn't really have, 7, 49, 343, 
and then one fifth, seven fifths, 49 fifths, and 343 fifths. Only seven fifths, in particular, negative seven fifths, is a number between negative one and negative two. Forty nine fifths, um, that's going to be nine and something. Five into forty five. Yeah. All right, so. Let us try this number. This is our only hope. Because that's the only place where this graph crosses the X axis. All right, so as ugly as this is going to end up being, we persevere and we take this. So I want that up here. No, I need this. Well, yeah, yeah, second quit. Second quit there. All right, so. Well, there, I have to read it this way. Here we go. We've got 5x to the third plus 7x squared plus 245x plus 343. And I am going to try. Lord help us. Negative seven seven fifths. And do I enjoy the prospect of working with fractions? No, I really don't. No, that's not what I'm going to do. See, I'm all upset now. Scared. What's going to happen? Five seven. 245 and 343. That's the only reason to write the polynomial out. And so this needs to move down here. And I will erase it up here. All right. So I bring down my five. Now this by itself is not going to be that hard because negative seven fifths times five, look at that, the fives cancel, leaving me with negative seven. Now that's pretty good. Seven plus negative seven is zero. That's not going to be real bad either. Zero times negative seven fifths is zero. So 245 plus zero is 245. Now I'm going to turn to my calculator. Two 45 times negative 7 fifths. Enter. Oh, look at that. Can you believe that? Negative 3, 43. 
and 343 plus negative 343 is zero. Ha! <laughs> ha! So this was just a guess. Because of all these numbers, the negative version of seven fifths, because we're dealing with positive and negative, that was the only number right there between negative one and negative two. So this P over Q business is really valuable. All right, so we have a rational zero. Now let's find out about the other zeros. Because we started with a cubic, after we've done synthetic division one time, that brings x to the third down to x to the two, which is x squared, plus zero x plus 245. And this zero is our remainder which shows that negative seven fifths is a rational zero. It's rational and it is a zero. Okay, so once again, this is going to zero out so that I'll have five X squared plus 245 equals zero. Now I'll subtract 245. I could pull out five as a common factor, but it's actually easier to do it this way, and you'll see why. So I'll have five X squared equals negative 245. I'll divide both sides by five. And so, wonder if I can just hit clear, yeah. Negative 245 divided by five, divided by five is negative 49. X squared equals negative 49. And then I take the square root of both sides. Let's come down to a different line. Plus or minus the square root of negative 49. Well, that's going to be a complex number. We don't have any real numbers that have negative radicands, okay? Uh, when it's a square root. All right, so X equals plus or minus the square root of negative one times 49. We're gonna go through all the steps here. Maybe some people watching will not have to go through all the steps. And that's fine. The square root of negative one is I, and the square root of 49 is seven. But of course we write it as plus or minus seven I. So we're going to have complex conjugate zeros, but we don't have to worry about that because all we're asked for is the rational zeros and the other zeros. the rational zeros and the other zeros.
Okay, so I'm, I'm looking for instructions, but I didn't put them in. As to whether or not you have to write these in the full A plus BI form, or it's good enough to leave it like this. So for my purposes, I'm gonna leave it like that. Um, negative seven I, positive seven I, those are the other zeros, and the rational zero, the one rational zero is negative seven fifths. So let's look at this one. Okay. That looked pretty scary and I tried to find a, a quick way out of it and could not find it. So I had to find the P's from 343 and it wasn't too bad. There were only four numbers there. And find the Q's, put the P's over the Q's and looking at the graph, clued us in very quickly to what would be the only possibility. Since these are plus or minus, it would be the minus seven fifths. And then using um, synthetic division showed us with this zero remainder that yes, it's true. Negative seven fifths is a rational zero. We were left with a quadratic. We solved that and we found out that the other two zeros are complex conjugates. So they're the other zeros. And for today, that's all there is for that. But tomorrow we'll have another step and that is from this formula, f of x equals a times x minus c1 times x minus c2 times x minus z3, which we aren't going to do until tomorrow. That was a mess. Let's move on. Before the day ends, I want us to do this quartic. Okay, now we're going to find the rational zeros and then the other zeros. So let's get to work. My P's are going to come from here. My Q's come from there. All right, well, P is going to equal plus or minus. See, the factors are going to be 1, 2, and 4. 1 times 4, 2 times 2. And Q, well, we have another 5. That'll be plus or minus 1 and 5. And so we're going to find all the P's over all the Q's. So that will be one, two, and four over one, one, two, and four over five. So that will be plus or minus one, two, four, and then one fifth, two fifths, and four fifths. plus or minus 
the same version. Now I want to point out something because that other problem, the one we just finished, sensitized me to this. Notice that one fifth, two fifths, and four fifths are all between zero and one. And the negatives, negative one fifth, negative two fifths, negative four fifths, will be between zero and negative one. So now we're going to graph. So this would have been step one. Step one. And now we're going to do step two, which is graph. Clear this. And then we do this. So this will be 5x to the fourth, which is caret 4. Come down. Uh, minus 4x to the third, minus 4x caret 3. Come down. Plus 19x squared. I didn't have to do that. That was silly. There. Minus 16x minus 4. Alright, so 5x to the fourth minus 4x to the third plus 19x squared minus 16x minus 4. Graph. Well, I'm going to do zoom 6 which will take me back to the basic graph. Ta-da, there we go. That looked like a positive one to me for sure. Let's make it bigger. You can do this. How about negative three to positive three? Remember, all we care about is the zero, so all we care about is where does the graph cross the x-axis? Any day now. One for sure. And then there's that one. Oh dear. All right, well, hey, it's one step at a time. For sure, I'm going to try one first. So, I'm going to have 5x to the fourth minus 4x to the third plus 19x squared minus 16x minus 4. Then bring down those coefficients. Five, negative four, 19, negative 16, negative four. And I'm going to make one my test. I skip a line, draw a line. Now our leading coefficient is five. I bring it straight down. Then, 5 times 1 is 5. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 19 plus 1 is 20. 20 times 1 is 20. Negative 16 plus 20 is 4. 
4 times 1 is 4. And negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Yay! So this is now x to the third. x squared, x constant. It's not a quadratic yet. I'm going to have to do synthetic division again. So we're going to have to analyze this graph. Hello. Oh, there it is. OK, now. We've got this one. We're going to have to make a good guess at that based on our fractions. Which are. Here. One fifth or negative one fifth that could be negative one fifth. Two fifths or negative two fifths. Uh, I don't think it's. I don't think it's negative two fifths or negative four fifths. I think it's negative one fifth. Let's try it. But we all know I can be wrong sometimes. More than sometimes. However, watch this. This was a zero. Oh, here we go. Now, I don't have to go back to the start. I can use this quotient with my negative one fifth. So I'm going to do that. I pull down the five. Well, again, a negative one fifth times five is the same as five over one. The fives cancel, leaving me with negative one over one, which is negative one. So five times negative one fifth is negative one. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. 0 times negative 1 fifth is 0. Now 20 times negative 1 fifth, I already know that's negative 4, but let's prove it here. 20 times negative 1 divided by 4. 5, enter, is negative 4. And 4 plus negative 4 is 0, so my guess was correct. So here are our two rational zeros, 1 and negative 1 fifth. Now what about this? Notice we went from x to the fourth to x to the third, and now we're at x squared plus 0x plus 20. And since that's 0 times x, it zeroes out, and we'll have 5x squared plus 20 equals zero because we're solving it. We're trying to find the zeros in there. Subtract 20 from both sides. Only when you've got a quadratic term and a constant term because that linear term zeroed out. So 5x squared equals negative 20. And we divide by 5. And we divide by 5. 
So x squared equals negative 20 divided by 5 is negative 4. Again, we're going to have a complex number. So x equals plus or minus 2i. So yeah, I mean, we could do this out the long way, but you know, the square root of four is two and the square root of negative one is I. So that's the quicker way to do it. Um, now, you'll fill in a place that says, well, rational zeros. Other zeros. So, yes, um, um, yeah, one and negative one-fifth or negative one-fifth and one. And then the other zeros are negative two i and positive two i. Notice there are four zeros just like the highest power, just like the degree of this polynomial. Okay, we've got enough time. Oh, uh, I thought there was a fifth power here. Darn. Well, we could have done it. You know enough now really to go on and do all these by yourself, but let me do the fourth degree one anyway. All right, P over Q. Thirty four. See, thirty four equals one times thirty four and two times seventeen, and that's it. So one. 2, 17, and 34 over 1. So no nasty fractions. So P over Q is just going to equal plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 17, and plus or minus 34. So for that reason, just to, to get a quick view when I graph, I'm going to extend my x-axis from negative 35 to positive 35 just in case 34 or negative 34 is one of those zeros. So here we go, back up here, back, back, back. Back, back, back. And then. All right, we're going to have x caret 4 down minus 7x third 7 
x caret 3 and come down. Negative 45 minus 45 x squared. No, no, no. X net, net, net. Delete. Delete. All right. Delete. Yeah. Woo. All right. X squared. There we go. Minus 71 X. Minus 34. I'm going to go to window and just real fast. Negative 34, uh-uh, 35. To positive 35. I did that so that I would actually see 34. Okay, let's do this. Oh, that's good. That's still good. Yeah, OK. So we can go back to, oh, well, we can go back to Zoom 6. Woo! Did you see that? Well, we've got some rational zeros there, don't we? I, I would bet a nickel that both negative one and negative one and negative two. Is that what that is? Negative one and negative two. Let's see, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, negative 10. Yes, negative one and negative two. I would bet those are my rational zeros. Onward. Okay, but not yet, because I have to write this out. One x to the fourth. I didn't mean to put that there. One x to the fourth minus seven x to the third minus 45 x squared minus 71 x minus 34. And my first guess is going to be negative one. Oh, but first. Okay. Make sure those match. All right, all right, all right, all right. And here's negative one. Bring down the one. One times negative one is negative one. Negative seven plus negative one is negative eight. Negative eight times negative one is positive eight. Negative 45 plus 8 is negative 37. Negative 37 times negative 1. All right, let me make sure I've got this. Right, positive 8, okay. Negative 37 times negative 1 is positive 37. Negative 71 plus 37 
is negative 34. Negative 34 times negative 1 is positive 34. Negative 34 plus 34 is 0. And then negative 2. Bring down a 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 8 plus negative 2 is negative 10. Negative 10 times negative 2 is positive 20. Negative 37 plus positive 20 is negative 17. Negative 17 times negative 2 is positive 34. Negative 34 plus positive 34 is zero. Zero remainder. So we have a rational zero. And a rational zero. And this went from x to the x to the fourth right here to x to the third to x squared. So our quotient is x squared minus 10x minus 17. And we are going to solve that. So a equals 1. B equals negative 10. C equals negative 17. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So we will have x equals negative, negative 10, plus or minus the square root of, parentheses negative 10 squared, minus 4ac, all over 2a. Okay, now, negative negative 10 is positive 10. x equals 10 plus or minus negative 10 squared is 100. Minus 4 times 1 is minus 4. Minus 4 times negative 17 is plus 68. All over 2. I just want to make sure I'm right on that. So 4 times 17. Yes, OK. Now, well, that'll be 168, so x equals 10 plus or minus the square root of 168. Now, I am pretty sure that this is not a perfect square, but let's check. 168, enter. Nope, see those decimals? 168 is not a perfect square. So we're going to break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down. 168 equals 4, 4 into 16 is 4, 4 into 8 is 2. All right, 4 is a perfect square, but let us keep going. 2 times 2 times 6 times 7, let's put a 7 here, times 6, 
6 breaks down into 2 times 3. Okay, I was concerned that we might have another perfect square hiding in there, but we don't. There's only one two. There are two twos here, so that's four. So 168 is going to equal four times 42. And that's going to be two times three times seven, which is does not include a perfect square. OK, so X equals and I said over two. I didn't say it, I'm saying it now. X equals 10 plus or minus the square root of four times 42 over two. I am about to run out of room. All right, so I'll start writing smaller. X equals 10 plus or minus uh, the square root of four times the square root of 42 over two. So that will be 10 plus or minus two times the square root of 42 over two. And that equals, almost done. 2 goes into 10 and 2 goes into 2, so this is going to be 10 over 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 42 over 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So there are our two other zeros. So I really liked this problem. So no, we're not doing X equals. We're doing the rational zeros and the other zeros, and then we will be done. The rational zeros and the other zeros we're going to have negative 1 and negative 2 actually i should say negative 2 negative 1 but oh well and then we're going to have 5 minus the square root of 42 comma 5 plus the square root of 42 Ah, I want to move this. Yes. Okay, this is going to bother me. I really have to do this. For no, no reason. Negative 2 and negative 1 are just as correct as negative 1 and negative 2. But I'm a math teacher. So, negative 2 comma negative 1. There you go. Woo! Woo! That's it. Have a wonderful day.